Jackson? Here. Councillor Fritz? Here. Councillor Lynch? Here. Councillor McGinty? Here. Councillor Roberts? Here. Representative Dunphy? Here. Representative Nelson? Come. And Manager McGovern? Here. And Municipal Clerk Lane? Present. Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Reports and correspondence from the councillors. Oh. Councillor Fritz. Um, the Regional Waste Systems uh, Recycling Committee has just made an announcement of an essay contest for high school seniors um, in the amount of $1,500 to the winner. And um, it can be for a two or four year college scholarship. Um, you can find the specifics of the application uh, on regionalwaste.org or you can call 773-6465 the deadline for the scholarship, the essay contest and application is April 15th. And um, it's open to high school seniors in the communities served by Regional Waste System uh, and the 27 communities. So I hope that I'd like to encourage Cape Elizabeth students to apply. Great, thank you. Anything else? Councilor Roberts. Thank you. I'd just like to remind Council and let the public know that on February 28th, the Finance Committee will be starting to deliberate this year's coming budget, so I know we'll all be working hard on that. Also, this past week, I met with the Community Services Board for their regular monthly meeting, and Sue is doing an excellent job of trying to increase some of the costs that are fees for, for services and make a reduction, so she's putting a lot of work into it. And thirdly, I've received a number, a number of people have asked me whether or not I was planning on running again to, with the uh, new election year coming up fast. And I've, uh, I do intend to run again. It's been uh, a lot of work and a lot of time, but it has been enjoyable. So for information purposes only, yes, I am planning on running. Thank you. Anything else? I, I am too, by the way. Anything else? <laughs> That's it. Okay. Town manager's report. I'm going to defer my report to the end of the meeting and uh, have it in the form of the assessor giving an update on the upcoming revaluation, if, if I might, Madam Chair. You certainly may. Thank you. Nothing else? No. Nope. Okay. Um, citizens' discussion of items not on the agenda. Anyone have anything? Hearing nothing, let's move on. Uh, we have the minutes of our last meeting, which was held January 10th, 2002. Do I hear a motion? Uh, Henry? Move that the minutes be uh, accepted as read. <laughs> Do I hear a second? A second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? No? All in favor? Madam Chairman. It, it's unanimous. The town clerk may have a report, too. Do you have anything to report? Mm -hmm. As far as end of this announcements? Mm -hmm. Like the, the balance in the vote of nomination pay business there? Mm -hmm. oh, sure. Yeah, I mean, if you have something to report. I'm sorry. We skipped. I skipped too fast. I think the municipal clerk had something she wanted to mention. Just want to let the public know that nomination papers for town council and school board will be available in my office beginning this Wednesday, the 13th of February. Uh, they are due back in my office by Monday, March 25th. So anybody um, that's interested in that, you can uh, contact me here at town hall. You would need to gather between 25 and 100 registered voters in the town to be nominated for either the council or the school board. There are two seats available on each, and they are all three-year terms. Thank you very much, and I, I'm sorry if I skipped over you before. Um, okay, we've dealt with the minutes. We now have a public hearing with regard to parking on Oakhurst Road, and before we get to the public hearing, I would like to turn this over to our ordinance. 
committee chair councillor lynch just for a brief explanation of what we're talking about here thank you what's before us tonight is the issue of parking on oak on the north side of oakhurst road east of waverly a couple of months ago i think in november a resident wrote to the town concerned that parking in that particular area of oakhurst road during times of services or other events at st albans could present a public safety problem because the roads in the residents view were at times impassable by large vehicles such as fire truck the police chief or the police department went out they took pictures took some measurements and evaluated the residents concern and felt that indeed there could potentially be a public safety hazard at that time it was referred to the ordinance committee of the town council and we met with the police chief and a representative of st albans we also gave notice to residents in the area although none showed up at our at our meeting at that time the ordinance committee reviewed the police chief's photographs and discussed with him his recommendation that parking on the north side of oakhurst east of waverly be prohibited and we felt as a result of our meeting and what he shared with us that this should be sent out for a public hearing so what's before us tonight is a public hearing on the question of whether or not there should be a no parking zone created on the north side of oakhurst road for 400 feet east of waverly road thank you very much so i will declare this public hearing open and if there's anyone who would like to speak to us on this issue please step to the podium and mention your name and address please okay i don't think we have anybody who wants to speak so i'll declare the public hearing closed so we are now going to deal with item number 88 which is with regard to parking on oakhurst road do i hear any motion madam chair um i would move that um we amend the section q am i doing this right um which deals with parking um to add the words no parking at any time on the northern northerly side of oakhurst road from waverly road easterly 400 feet towards shore road second and moved and seconded is there any discussion uh, yes. i would just like to add one thing uh, and i should have mentioned it in my report um at our meeting the um, representative of the church did indicate that the church um, had no objection to uh, this ban on parking okay thank you uh, just a question for clarification okay. does that go right to shore road pardon me no. it doesn't go to shore road how far from shore road does it stop can we ask chief williams to come up and answer that about question i think it's fairly close mm -hmm. uh, my measurement only was from waverly road down eastly on, on oakhurst towards shore road right. um if you're familiar with oakhurst road area yeah. it comes up and there's a large bend right it's it would start just after that bend and go towards where waverly road why not continue it down to shore road i mean wouldn't that uh, if they're parked on both sides wouldn't that also be a problem um what we found was there was some construction in that area along with the renovations to the church uh -huh. that area seemed to have been widened somewhat or paved right over to the sidewalks therefore it gave enough room for vehicles and or emergency vehicles to get by so they can park on both sides right next to shore road and the fire truck could still get through correct okay thank you yeah. right. thank you uh, madam chair while chief williams is up i did have a letter from a resident asking about what the enforcement mechanisms would be in the event of violations and i was not able to answer the resident's question so perhaps um, the chief could discuss with us how this this parking ordinance which i assume is the same as other no parking ordinances 
is enforced in the town sure this this particular ordinance once it goes into effect takes takes effect thirty days after it's voted upon we plan to put in for no parking signs try to do it limited in that particular area it is also widely known through the church is it is my understanding that they're going to let the parishioners know that that particular area is no parking I think that that's this has been a an item amongst the parishioners already then we will have after that 30 days we will have some officers down in the area on those particular days that we have problems just to reinforce just visibly reinforce that that's a no parking area and then after that we only would tag at that particular point there it is not a tow zone so we will not tow anybody on Sundays or anything like that. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. How about disassembly? Excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any further discussion or questions? No? Well, All have a, I have, yeah. I, yes, Councilor Barry? I don't mean to belabor this, and uh, I know we have a lengthy agenda here tonight, but uh, as far as... Uh, uh, the parking there if somebody does park and they do block the road they just get a ticket but then the, the fire engine still can't get through why are they not going to tow it the manager would like to yeah, answer you know, that. we expect cooperation on this and don't expect a problem and I since you have raised the issue again I didn't want to correct the chief of police but you know even though it's a no towing zone any time that uh, vehicles are blocking public safety equipment we have the ability otherwise in the ordinance yes. unrestricted to tow and you know if there was ever an issue that you know was an immediate threat to the public uh, safety we would tow but it's it's not something that we anticipate doing uh, I can remember a, a sign on a fraternity house that said cars parked here unlawfully will be disassembled and they never had any trouble <laughs> <laughs> not a problem. I don't know if we'll have to resort to that but <laughs> I, I think probably what we plan will be effective we, we won't do as Chief Chitwood recommends and impound the vehicle either. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any further discussion or questions? No. Let's move the question then. All in favor of the motion? It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chief. Okay. Um, item number 89. <coughs> Excuse me which uh, has to do with a lot near C Stevenson Street for a potential <coughs> Greenbelt link. Is there anything you'd like to say? Yes, this was before the council last month. You referred it to the Ordinance Committee. Uh, it is being offered by a, a family uh, led by a, a woman named uh, Fern Petty who uh, no longer wants to have it. As you can see from the map on the back, uh, it is uh, right exactly through where the Conservation Commission has a proposed Greenbelt Trail in the 2001 Greenbelt Plan. So the Conservation Committee was extremely pleased with this uh, offered donation and uh, unanimously recommends that the lot be accepted. Thank you very much. Council again. Or maybe Mary Ann went on. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I don't believe this was referred to the ordinance. No, it was not. I was going oh, to I'm correct sorry. that. It was referred to the Conservation Commission, spoke. not the Ordinance Thank you. Committee. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you won't be the last time <laughs> <laughs> um, do I hear a motion I'd like move that move we accept the lot uh, designated as u29-38 near Stevenson Street as a as a uh, potential for the green belt second it's been moved and seconded any discussion hearing none did I cut you off I, I guess I just have one question is this lot actually uh, right on the trail that has been designated yes okay thank you there's a little map here and it shows the trail um, it's been moved and seconded any further discussion hearing none let's move the question all those in favor it's unanimous thank you very much And we thank the citizens' generosity uh, on behalf of the town. This is very, very good for the green belt system. Um, item number 90 has to do with uh, Fort Williams Park use request. Is there anything you'd like to say, Mr. McGovern? 
Yeah, I would recommend that you approve this uh, subject condition set forth by the Fort Williams Advisory Commission. This is the symphony uh, will be coming back, or hopes to come back for their annual concert on Tuesday, July 2nd. And the main chapter of the American Cancer Society would like to have a walk on Sunday, October 6th, uh, which will traverse in and out of Fort Williams Park. Thank you very much. Do I hear a motion? Councilor uh, Barry? Madam Chairman, I move that uh, the following uses of Fort Williams Park in 2002 uh, be approved with the events to be conducted in performance with the Fort Williams Park use policy and subject to conditions set for uh, the by the Fort Williams advice. <laughs> Somebody has misprinted here. here. Set forth by. We, we, we've got to have a, a, a spell check on this thing. <laughs> Uh, subject to conditions set by the Fort Williams Advisory Committee. That's what they intended to say, and that's the form of my motion. And the dates are the Portland Symphony Orchestra on July 2nd, 2002, which is a Tuesday, and American Cancer Society, which is October 6th, and that's a Sunday. Thank you very much for that on-the-spot editing. I'm doing the best I can. I'll and it's very that. good. I'll second that. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Okay, item number 91 has to do with um, the Hawthorne Woods subdivision in Fickett Street, South Portland. Mr. Manager, would you like to say something? I'd be happy to. Uh, the Hawthorne Woods subdivision uh, is in South Portland. Uh, in its entirety, however, a small amount of the drainage uh, would enter into the town's drainage system. This was reviewed by Steve Harding, a town engineer. He looked at it actually back in June. And I would like to recommend that uh, this drainage be accepted, uh, conditioned upon the prov provisions in the June 28, 2001 letter uh, from the town engineer. We do have representatives here, uh, both the attorney and the engineer for mm -hmm. Hawthorne Woods. Uh, I indicated to them that I, I didn't think that this would be a major issue, uh, but they are here. Uh, if you'd like to have a presentation uh, or uh, de some detailed questions on this. It's, it's a fairly routine matter, and it's just a little bit unusual in that uh, it is on, on the town border and, and wishing to be a good neighbor to uh, South Portland as well as uh, accommodating uh, the natural drainage uh, that occurs on this earth, uh, we believe it should be accepted. Our system uh, is totally capable of handling the flow. Thank you very much, Mr. McGovern. Do I hear a motion? I, I'll move approval um, con with the conditions listed <clears throat> in the June 28th letter from, uh, from OST um, and the requirements. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Councillor Roberts. I just had one question. I think the town uh, manager may have just answered it. It said the drainage system and not sewer system. I'm assuming this means the sewer system. No, this is drainage. Stormwater, right? It's just stormwater. stormwater. This stormwater. is just drainage. So it water. won't affect the capacity on the sewer system in no. any way? Okay. Any further? I get it. I do have a question of, of the developer, and I don't know if the developer has, has seen what Oast Associates has said, um, has recommended, and, and I'm wondering whether you intend to have an, a housing association, whether you intend to have the detention basin um, and stormwater detention as, as... Could you please um, step to the podium just so the people on TV, can, uh, listening on TV can hear? State your name, please. Thank you. I'm Mike Pierce, P-E-A-R-C-E, -E, and uh, I represent the uh, developer in this matter. I have with me tonight Tim Brown from BH2M who can answer any technical questions you might have. We've already drafted a homeowner's declaration and submitted it for prelim preliminary approval to the city of South Portland, but because it's not finalized yet, we haven't presented it, but we intend to incorporate every one of the suggestions uh, in the June 28th letter that you have, and we find them perfectly acceptable. Thank you. Any okay. further questions for Mr. Pierce? Yeah, uh, in Councilor the future, Barrett. this won't be uh, enlarged so that it would become a problem, can it? 
uh, what wouldn't be a large the subdivision? The, the, no, well, yeah. The, the, the subdivision is totally within the city of South Portland. Okay. Totally. And, and the, the, the stormwater drainage there is not going to increase in, in the future no, and in, become a problem to Cape Elizabeth? In, in fact, uh, uh, that June 28th letter points out that the post-construction runoff will be virtually the same as the pre-construction, if not less. Fine. Thank any, you. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Any further questions for Mr. Pierce? Thank you very much, you. sir. Uh, is there any further discussion? <coughs> Councilor Fritz. Um, <clears throat> the, the form that this letter is in is as a recommendation to the council. So it's in um, language that says we recommend. I guess I'm just wondering from Mr. McGovern whether this would be, I mean, I think it ought to be these are requirements that we would want the DEP to, to stipulate and that South Portland would have to require of the developer and follow through with this before we would accept the drainage as built. Yeah. My understanding of your motion was that it was per the conditions as recommended by uh, Mr. Harding, so, uh, by the old letter, so that so the motion it would is be to tied include, down. include those recommendations as requirements. That's as requirements. Right. That was right. my understanding of that. Your that's yes. the way I intended it. Okay. Any further discussion? Let's move the question then. All those in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Sing us a song. <laughs> okay. Mr. Pierce has a talent. He knows all the words to all the songs that were written prior to 1930. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for letting us know that. <laughs> we should have made him sing back his responses okay. to us. <laughs> Okay, item number 92 has to do with the Robinson Woods Conservation Easement. Mr. McGovern? Yes, uh, you might have noted that there's two representatives of the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust here, two of the founding members of the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust, uh, Dr. Peter Rand and uh, Mr. Nat Clifford. Uh, they're here to answer any detailed questions, but this w I would like to mention that this was reviewed by Mike Hill, the town attorney, and was found to be an acceptable form. It was circulated to the town council in substantially this form about six weeks ago, and all of those comments, which the few that I received, uh, were uh, forwarded to uh, the land trust, and uh, it has been reviewed by the Maine Coast Heritage Trust and by the state of Maine, uh, who will be providing funding for the land for Maine's future. The land trust is very interested in uh, uh, having this move forward for one substantial reason, and that's uh, the town council pledged $250,000 uh, toward this campaign, and 150000 of which was borrowed, and 100000 that's in the uh, town's land acquisition fund. And as the letter from uh, the land trust indicates, I think it indicates in one of these letters, they're now paying a, a small amount of interest that amounts to $1,000 per week. Uh, on the mortgage on this property, and they would like to uh, receive this money as soon as possible. Uh, you know, there is a, we have dealt with a situation of, you know, the, the old chicken and egg of when do you make the money available and when does it get finalized and all those issues. And I have reviewed extensively the progress of the fundraising campaign uh, with representatives of the, the land trust and the likelihood that at the very least that their capital campaign will pay the $750,000 cost, and in as much as the uh, state of Maine through the Land for Maine's Future uh, is putting in $250,000, the town's putting in $250,000, and the amount that the land trust announced had been earned as part of the capital gain campaign as their kickoff, uh, they're well within sight of their goal, and if, needed, if need be, uh, they do have other funds to call upon uh, to uh, finish off the $750,000. Obviously, the capital campaign is looking at this as well as some other important farmland protection measures and looking at uh, the stewardship of this land as well. So 
i would encourage you to authorize the signing of the conservation easement on behalf of the town as well as the release of the two hundred fifty thousand dollars in funds so moved second it's been moved and seconded is there any further discussion or questions hearing none all those in favor it's unanimous thank you very much congratulations and good luck with your capital campaign um should we do the citizens discussion before the report uh, we have another opportunity for citizens for to discuss items that are not on the agenda do I hear any citizens or the students would the students like to bring anything up our student reps no nope. they're happy they're content okay I hear no um, citizens discussion so we're done with the regular agenda except uh, the managers report will include now a report from our town assessor. thank you very much Matt Sturgis yeah, I've, I've asked Matt in case you're wondering uh, we're looking at about 10 12 minutes on this so we're not looking at extending this into an hour or anything like that <laughs> that's a reminder to Matt as well <laughs> thank you 10 to 12 minutes man. okay set my watch <laughs> well, first of all, thank you very much for the opportunity to come here tonight and bring you some information as to what we've been up to in the assessing world and uh, kind of an update as to uh, where we're going with revaluation, which has been much anticipated and uh, put off for a bit uh, due to the position change last year. Um, ultimately, tonight what I've brought is a p small packet of uh, handouts, some charts and a couple of letters in there. Uh, first of all, at the start of that package, I have a letter that I will be submitting to the courier. And uh, it will basically be breaking down why we are going to be pursuing the, uh, the revaluation. When it will start, you know, it's ultimately the basics. When it will start, how long it will last, and when will we be done and what we will be doing when we are coming out. So we try to set the game plan in motion so people will understand, yes, there are going to be a couple of different people coming out, measuring my property, perhaps asking to come in. And I want to make it as easy and as uh, unintrusive as possible uh, when we're doing the inventory of parcels in town. Secondly, in that package, there is a chart that I have that kind of breaks down the last three years you know, ratios by type on different properties in Cape Elizabeth, uh, tracking from 1999 to 2001. And those numbers that I have there are uh, ultimately through November of 2001. And uh, at the time when I was doing this, we were looking to get together in January. So uh, it, they haven't changed uh, dramatically since then over that one month period of time. But uh, as if you look at that, you can see how everything's kind of consistently pulled away from market value, market value being 100%, uh, with the blue line and the yellow line being condominiums and single-family homes. You can see how they have pretty much stayed close, closely tracked, uh, pr probably primarily because they are single-family dwellings. And uh, they were fairly accurately measured the last time and assessed. And uh, they, I didn't expect to see a a giant variation between the two. And uh, the other end of that, the black line, is obviously the shorefront. And that's where, also another, I guess to be labeled the obvious, is where they've seen, or where Cape Elizabeth, more specifically, has seen a great deal of appreciation over the past three years, where consistently with the sales that do come in, they have been further and further away from what we were assessing them for back in 1994 at the finalization of the last evaluation. If I could yes, just yeah. ask a question. So according to this chart we're looking at, for instance, the shorefront property looks like it's, I don't know, 45% or something like that. Does that mean it's valued in our lists as 45, its value is 45% of what its actual sales price was? What, what does yeah, the percentage yeah. mean? What a, what a ratio means, and I'm sorry, I kind of 
uh, get caught up in assessor speak and get lost in the sauce. But ultimately, what a ratio means and a sales ratio means is the relationship between the assessed value of that property that transferred okay. and its sale price. So of the sales that I have looked at over the past three years that were waterfront residential properties of single family, uh, they were selling for, pro well, they were assessed at approximately 44% or now, based in, in 2001, assessed at 44% of what they actually sold for. And it doesn't take, uh, you know, it doesn't take you long to think about the properties that have sold. You know, some of them have made the papers for their uh, high transfer price. Mm -hmm. But the, the land pricing and the values that we established for the majority of those properties were established back in 1994. So the land pricing that we employ is based on the, the economy of 1994. And by appreciation and uh, uh, increases in the market, that has just compounded over and above itself. And with those properties, uh, they really have felt the greatest appreciation since that time period. And that chart kind of shows by class that perhaps those residential, single family residential, non waterfront properties and the condominiums are ultimately paying for it based on that in 2001, about 22% difference uh, in assessment between the two. So somebody who bought their house, say, for instance, at uh, $100,000, actually, uh, let's see, yeah, if they paid $100,000, they were probably assessed at $66,000, while the same person, if they had a uh, property on the water that sold $100,000, it was being assessed at 44. And uh, that way that those other properties, which there are a greater number of, are picking up the difference ultimately. So that shows the inequity that exists. And the next chart that we do have <coughs> shows the ratio tracking of single family residences since the last revaluation. And in 1994, uh, we started out at 91.16%. And I went back and I tracked all the sales that have taken place of single family residences and just watched them and saw where they worked. And as we recall, 95, 96, the economy was starting to really pull out of it, but yet our assessments were holding fairly strong. But over the past four years, 97, 98, 99, 2000, 2001, you can see how it's consistently just pulled away from the market value. And that just confirms where we were uh, before, uh, or what a, where you were before, I guess, when you were thinking about starting the revaluation process. And, and seeing that, well, now we are at 63.45% through November of 2001. And that's kind of a significant number because state law mandates that once you drop below 70%, you need to do a revaluation. And uh, that's, that's basically the, we've been hovering around there for the past couple of years, but the law requires that we pursue that uh, action. And, you know, for equity standpoint, when you start to get to that position where your properties are assessed at 70% of what they're selling for, there's probably a great deal of, uh, shall we say, dissipation in the market between the different types, whereas some properties are paying more than their fair shares while others are reaping the benefits of those other properties that are paying their, the difference. <coughs> Can I ask a question? If please, please. If a house has sold the the new price that's in your books that people are being taxed at is the new sales price, correct? No, no. 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 that's a there is a place that they do that, and that's what they have for law in California. It's that's what they had Proposition 13 for. That what a property sells for is what it's assessed for. But we can't do that by law. If you're going to change it. You can't just go out and adjust their property because then you would be rendering an inequitable assessment in many ways. Uh, it's evidence that, and if you have you know, just one sale that comes out and it, you know, the guy pays twice as much as everybody else does in the market, well then you take that as the, you know, the greater fool than, that, than I theory. But when all of a sudden you have this person paying twice as much and the person next to him, and all of a sudden you have a pattern of that type of behavior, you have evidence at that point and you, you you can see the market trend and that tells you pretty much what the properties in that area should be worth but one property you can't 
hang your hat on that and, mm -hmm. and make a determination for everybody else. And you can't just you know, pick them out and, and assess them for that amount because then you would be doing an equitable assessment. Mm -hmm. uh, it has been done, but generally they get challenged and uh, they, they become case law, <laughs> unfortunately. Mm -hmm. so, so every house <coughs> in town that was here in 1994 is still quote unquote valued at its 1994 valuation price? Uh, that's that's a very good question. Uh, if there hasn't been a change, mm -hmm. then they probably are. If they haven't built an if they addition, put or an addition, a deck, like uh, that. Yeah. upgraded or done renovation, mm -hmm. uh, many people will do. And we get building permits every month that we track where we look at what somebody may be doing. Uh, they mm -hmm. did a kitchen over. They upgraded their bathroom. They knocked out a wall. Uh, perhaps expanded the living room. Did the floors over. You know, those are things that everybody does or a lot of people do in life, but. Uh, yet we need to go out and try to pick that up. And some people do it without getting permits. And mm -hmm. that's kind of why we go out and try to look at all these properties in town as well to make sure that we're picking that up. Where uh, if you have two properties that are fairly fairly similar, you want to have them you know, if they're equally situated, pretty much the same type of construction. You want them to be pulling about the same weight when it mm -hmm. comes to tax time and uh, making sure that they're all feeling uh, equitably treated. Uh, finally, the last chart that I have is uh, shows, you know, by map where we're looking at uh, as far as the sales ratios in town. And uh, starting, I guess, uh, if you look at this, the yellow line is the trend line, and it kind of shows the balance between the top end of the scale and the bottom end of the scale. And as you can see, there are a number of properties that are kind of well, well below. We've got a pretty good cluster around that 70 mark. And that's uh, you know, that helps us out. And but the lower properties will pull the high points down. It kind of averages it out. Uh, but the, ultimately, the, those properties that you see in the bottom are consistent with what I presented earlier, where you're looking at shorefront properties. And Each dot is an actual sale. It's an it's actually an actual map. Uh, what I did was took uh, each map that we have, we have 70 maps in the town of Cape Elizabeth mm -hmm. that we break the properties up by map a lot. Mm -hmm. And what we have done is, or what I have done, is taken all of those sales, broken them down each by map over the time period 1990 to 2001, and figured out what the assessed ratio per, uh, what their assessment ratio is by each map, and then plugged all the numbers in, and then charted them to see where are my problem areas. And if, uh, if I see some that are looking down below, maybe there aren't as many properties there that exist. Uh, the furthest button down that you can see, that's about 47.6%. The furthest to the right, those are actually all the shorefront properties in town. I classify those to see where they sat in relationship with everything else, and they may be inclusive in some of the other dots. So that, that farthest right dot it is houses that all the houses that have sold that have been on the shore front. That actually were shore And they may well be sort of included on some of these other maps. Yes. But you pulled them out separately just to see just where to they see were. Just to see where they where they rested as a class. Because I knew where uh, a lot of the other single family residences were. And a lot of, and obviously when you're looking at uh, Cape Elizabeth, about 3,500 properties here are uh, residential. Mm -hmm. And then when you take that and you look at this at the shorefront, obviously that is, a, it's a very small percentage, but yet it's significant enough of a difference from market value that, uh, and, and value wise itself, that it, it, it makes an impact. And uh, so I guess that ultimately leads us down to the last uh, point that I had, and that was that when we do get this done, when we do complete the revaluation, you know, ultimately we're trying to upgrade all of them to close to 100% of market value, and that's, primarily because we want to maintain state uh, mandated assessment requirements, as well as spread the uh, valuation increase evenly and, and spread the tax burden equitably among the properties that are located in town as required by law. And that's what I have for, for data information. And then finally, the last uh, line or the last page that I have in, the, in my package is a letter that I'm also going to send to the courier like the last year regarding uh, the homestead and veterans exemption. It's not all bad news. We do try to bring out some of the state programs that we do have, uh, such as the veterans and homestead exemptions that actually give people a break. Uh, although it you know, may be $140 for a, a homestead exemption and it may be 125 for veterans. But nevertheless, 
it's it's still it's still a break and it'll help people out and those programs exist out there and we want people to take advantage of them as much as they can because we're in the information business in many different ways and that's just one of the good parts that we, that we bring out. Matt, what's the timeline for the reval? Uh, we're looking to start in the second half of March and uh, what I've done is broken down the town into 14 different sections and ultimately what we're going to do is grab a section uh, and work right through that one and uh, what I'll what my plan is to do is to inform the council before I start working on a new section that way when you know I'll get the phone calls but you will also get the phone calls and wondering who the heck is this guy Matt Sturgis and who is this guy that uh, wants to go through my house and just want to make sure that you know you're up to date with where we're going and so you can have as much information as possibly uh, I can provide you so what we'll try to do is you know, as we're going to enter a new area, I'll let you know specifically like the, the section of town, be prepared. And uh, what we're going to do is we'll go once in the morning and we'll try to make contact with the property owner and see if they're there and do a physical inspection of the exterior if nobody is there. And if somebody is there, then great, we'll be able to do the full review if they're comfortable with that. If they don't want us to, they don't have to. They cannot appeal the decision of the assessor because of that, because we have to have certain leverages that the law allows, but yet, if they do not want to, ultimately, we're not going to, you won't do, do a punitive assessment if you do that. You still have to follow the same standards, but yet, we try to get in just to make sure what we have for a record is accurate. And then, ultimately, uh, you know, we'll work through all 14 sections. It should take us 18 months, and uh, after we get through that, we'll go through the, the repricing. I've been working on that since... Uh, ultimately about the third month since I got here, trying to extract out land values. And uh, I've been reading different cost tables to try to determine what the cost of the actual improvements will be. And we can get that by looking at the, uh, or what I've been tracking is the, the building permit prices and values that are submitted by different contractors in town when they build a new house or add on a deck or put on an addition to a house. I try to figure out what the square footage uh, pricing is on that improvement and then plug that in and test it against national tables that I have from Marshall Valuation and other cost schedules and see how those two agree with each other because if you build it here in the town center, if you build it over in Cross Hill, if you build it down in Broadco, the materials are going to cost about the same. And then ultimately trying to figure out the land value is the toughest part because uh, then you have to do all kinds of other little techniques such as build land building residual and I can put you to sleep with it. But Ultimately, what we, what I've been trying to do is figure out our per unit values in the different neighborhoods. So when we get down to it, and I have to end up determining what the assessed value of the land is going to be in different neighborhoods, I'll have that pretty much hammered out. Well, when will uh, citizens know what their new revalued what number is? What the new assessed is? value yes. will be? Uh, we're looking to do that actually uh, latter part of May of next year, early part of June. And that way we'll, we will have hearings where each of the uh, property owners, after they've had their new value uh, sent out to them, they can come in and take a look at it. This is May or June of 03? Of 03. Okay. Yeah. For, and we'll be looking for a commitment of 2003, which is the first part of August. But hopefully by then we will have had uh, property owners who want to come in and take a look at their record and uh, perhaps uh, have a, a vigorous discussion with me or uh, perhaps uh, thank me for clarifying some errors that existed uh, prior to. Uh, I'll be happy to, to discuss those with them. But we will have a hearing, and uh, it's a lot easier to get a lot of those issues taken care of before uh, we go to commitment. That way we can have... And what is commitment? Commitment's actually what... Uh, remember last year, uh, after we sent out the... or just before we sent out the tax bills, I submitted a booklet to the council, mm -hmm. and it had uh, ultimately all the papers that show what our value was, what we needed to raise for taxes, and that whole package there. Yes. Uh, ultimately, commitment is when I commit the tax roll, which is every property and person who owns it in town, and I commit that list to the tax collector for the town. Okay. It's kind of, it's kind of like the term that they use uh, okay. for that. But that happens each year. It's the start of the new uh, tax season. Okay. Thank you. Matt, I have a question for you also. On your map here, or your graph of the four lines, what percentage of the homes 
fall in that black line. Do you have any idea? Overall, for, uh, for uh, Cape waterfront Elizabeth. properties in town. Yeah, what, for like 25%, 10%, 5%? I think it's, it's probably between 10 to 14%, ultimately. Of the of the properties that sold, or of the of all the properties? Of all the, of all the properties in town. And of the properties that sold, I think I had all of about 75 different sales that have taken place. So we've had a pretty good amount of activity over the past three years. That's kind of what I've been trying to focus on because it kind of shows before the ramp up and through the, or before prices started to really greatly appreciate. In the year 2000 uh, and 2001 is really when you saw some significant uh, growth in real estate values. Uh, there was, I have some carrot sales that I've uh, examined that took place between 99 and 2001 and to see what the same property sold for Say four hundred thousand dollars back in 1998, and it sold for six thirty-nine last month, uh, and that's less than twenty-four months. Uh, and it's not just here. Also, I've, I've spoken with fellow assessors, uh, South Portland, for instance. They've been looking at about twelve percent per year appreciation uh, in certain neighborhoods because we have so many that we kind of share information between the two of us, and. Just happened to have a conversation about where her, what her growth was looking at in this one neighborhood that we were looking at, and she said it was 12 percent per year. And we've seen that and more in a lot of different neighborhoods. Um, the, when I've looked at and examined paired sales, where you had the same property that sold twice within a small period of time, so you can figure that out by just averaging the amount of increase. Do you get the sale price on a, a sale from the uh, transfer tax document in the registry of deeds? Yes, we get the uh, we get the deeds basically after the first week of the month. Uh, registry's been pretty good about turning those out lately. I guess because they increased the cost of the copies by 50 percent, they can get a turnaround a lot faster. But uh, the DOBs or the declarations of value come about the middle to the third week of the month. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's when we get the information regarding what the transfer amount was or how much it sold for. And uh, that's all public record. And we do some, and I correlate that every month and give a report to the manager and uh, to our website and courier. They can publish that information and do what they want with it. So. And we also put it right out there on our calendar. We break it down by month, by map, and uh, by any way that a person would ask for it, they just call ahead. So. Great. Be happy to do it. Thank you. And more questions, Council. <clears throat> are, are you going to be doing all of the visits yourself, or I'm are you uh, going to be having another gentleman who's a retired assessor, and uh, mm -hmm. he's going to help me out? So, uh, and I've had numerous discussions with him, and luckily uh, he came from Brunswick, but he lives in South Pole, his name's Bob Trev, and uh, he's a good guy, and I net don't have to spend a lot of time training them. And uh, in this business, it's really hard to kind of tell somebody, you know, just go out there, do an inventory, and don't really get in any discussions regarding tax policies of the town, uh, you know, taxation in general. This isn't a time for the soapbox. You're just out there to try to, to get the information, thank the people for their time, and then move along. And uh, he understands that. So it works out quite well, I think. Any kind of other questions, uh, I, he's been directed to bring have them contact me. So, but I think uh, that that should make it a lot easier as well to have two of us, and it'll make our window of completion a lot shorter than it would have been if it was just just myself. Is it, I'm wondering whether it's possible for, say, appointments to be made or something with as with as many people as we have working, and just you know whether that makes it more convenient for people. Oh yes, definitely. Uh, if I if I don't get the opportunity to get in after the second time, we'll leave a door hanger, and state a representative from the town of Cape Elizabeth Assessing Department uh, came here today to examine your property, and if you would like to set up an appointment, please contact and with our number, and uh, to set up a time that would be convenient for the both of us. And uh, we've got the uh, office staff prepared, and we have some uh, a tracking method by which they can keep track of my day to know if I'm in the southern part of town that I really shouldn't be 
up in the northeastern part of town 15 minutes after I'm finished with that appointment. Uh, mm -hmm. Otherwise, uh, Chief Williams would pull me in for a talk. Right. <laughs> You'd do more than that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Excuse me, could, could we ask that the, that the students be released since the regular meeting is over if we're going to continue the conversation with assessing? It's fine with they me. they got their coats feel, on, they're ready. Feel, <laughs> feel free to depart. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Are there any more questions from counselors for Mr. Sturgis? I have a question. Uh, Matt, will you or your um, contractor have any particular form of identification so that uh, our residents will, will know that, in fact, you're there on official town business and, and can be um, secure when they sure, let when they you guys really into entry. their house? <laughs> sure. Yeah, it's a very good question. And uh, I've spoken with Neil about it. And what we're going to do is I have, uh, I have cards already. And Bob Tripp, I'm going to. We also have a template made. We're going to produce some for him as well, uh, identifying him as a property lister for the town. And uh, Neil and I had a little conversation today about getting all of his information out there. So, but we want to make sure that people know. And if they have any questions, too, we're more than happy to give them the cards, and they can call and contact and verify it with our office. And then if they're you know, and then we can make an appointment at a later time after they verified it. We want to do this as user-friendly as we possibly can because, you know, ultimately we're in the customer service business. You know, we have to, we have a very hard job to do. We have a lot of numbers that we have to crunch, but ultimately when it comes down to it, uh, there's never any room for you know, poor customer service. So we want to do it as best as we can. Thank you. Any more questions? I think we're all set. Thank you very much. Yeah, Good thank luck. Thank you very much. Yeah, I appreciate it. <laughs> thank you. I hope we adjourn. It's been moved to adjourn. Do I hear a second? <clears throat> second. The moved and seconded. All in favor? It's unanimous. Okay. I, I'll assume Penny raised her hand. Thank you. It's unanimous. Thank you very much. This is the result of the survey.